Good evening and welcome to our second edition of UBC News tonight on this fourth day of April 2024. I'm Lorene Masika Kazimoto. I will start off this news bulletin with the first uh, headlining story this evening. The Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Thomas Tewa, has tasked the Leader of Opposition to allow the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, Balam Barugahara, a chance to pursue the release of political prisoners. Tayaba says the opposition wing should treat the move as a courtesy and provide the necessary support accordingly. Leader of Opposition Joel Senyonyi, who was on Wednesday very hesitant, has finally tabled two lists, including alleged 18 missing persons and 55 political prisoners who are claimed to have been under detention for the last three years without trial. After officially taking the mantle as the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, Balam Bargahara started the move to have the political prisoners released. For the young men who, who are detained and they have not yet gone on trial. So the President accepted to pardon most of them who, are not, who don't have cases of murder. And he said security forces should, uh, and, and the intelligence should expedite the investigation uh, uh, going on. So I will request my brother, uh, Honorable Joro Senyonyi, to give, right Honorable Joro Senyonyi, to give me the list. I will do that for you, Joel, and I will make sure the president uh, acts on that. The leader of opposition, Joel Senyonyi, embraced the avenue spearheaded by Minister Balam and has finally tabled the list of the alleged missing and political prisoners. We tabled those lists severally and so they are within the records. However, for there to be no excuse anymore, I would like to lay on table, uh, number one, the list of NUP supporters on remand in various courts, the likes of Olivia Lutaya and others who have been held for over three years, trial has not kicked off. Senyonyi tables the list with his body language describing a faint heart, basing on the history of the vain attempts to rescue the political prisoners. I would like to also lay the list uh, of missing NUP supporters, which has John Bosco Chibalama and others, who, by the way, the Prime Minister told us was arrested and she knows where he is. But the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Speaker Thomas Tayewa, arrested the fears of the opposition, the requesting Lop Senyonyi to accord the opportunity to Minister Balam to drive the campaign to free the political prisoners. Courtesy, okay? And uh, I urge you, honorable colleagues, you know, the best way to win an argument on this floor of parliament is by being courteous to each other. The, that way you win many hearts, you win, you know, the moment you do that, then we focus on the argument. Okay. In November last year, the Minister of State for Internal Affairs, David Mohosi, while responding to the demands of the opposition involving missing and alleged political prisoners, told parliament how government does not arrest people depending on their political inclinations. Minister Muhozi revealed to the House how the alleged prisoners were charged with respective offences and the courts will determine their fate. Additionally, Minister David Muhozi also said some alleged missing persons like John Bosco Chibarama were reported as un unwitnessed disappearances. And these include Kasumba George, uh, Kisembo Godfrey and Kibalama John Bosco. Despite most of the alleged occurrences being reported to have taken in broad daylight, none of the alleged witnesses mentioned the registration number plates of the alleged vehicles involved. It has also been established that there is a well-orchestrated smear campaign of aiding people who seek to go abroad in search of livelihood opportunities to claim political persecution and or persecution for belonging to sexual minorities. They don't have any offence they have committed. If they committed any offence, surely three years down the road, you should have produced this evidence in court, but they have not produced any of this evidence in court. Daniel Mugoya, Gloria Gutabinji, UBC News. Uganda Revenue Authority has asked Parliament to reinstate the budget cut of 55.73 billion shillings on wages which is bigger than the gap of their current staff on payroll while presenting their financial policy statement of the 2024-2025 
where URA's budget estimate is at 564 billion shillings. The Commissioner General, URA, also asked Parliament to approve their structure of 169 billion shillings to help improve efficiency in tax collection. Officials from Uganda Revenue Authority, led by the State Minister for Finance in charge of general duties, Henry Musasizi, and the Commissioner General, URA, John Rojochi Musinguzi, have appeared before the Finance Committee of Parliament to present their financial policy statement for financial year 2024-2025. URA's budget estimate for 2024-2025 is 564.26 billion shillings, lower than the budget of 2023-2024, which was 619.99 billion shillings. State Minister for General Duties Henry Musa says URA suffered a budget cut of 55.73 billion shillings because of the annual utilized wage for the last two previous financial years. A big number of members of parliament who sit on this committee have disagreed with budget cut, saying they need to see efficiency in revenue collection and propose that the budget cut on wage is reinstated. If it is maintained, even this gap will not, the gap that will be created will not cover the current staff on, uh, on, 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 the, on, on, on the payroll. You should do. You should be very careful, not to cut even what they have. Something else, like you know, but not human resource that should be the ones to help us enhance the efficiency and collect for us more money. We ask the government and parliament to reinstate the the value for staff costs up to a tune equivalent to the existing contracts. And this is your proposal. So my question is actually, why would you bring us a proposal that is not tiring of what we want from URA? Okay? They want manpower. The projected revenue collection for 2024-2025 is estimated to be 31.5 trillion shillings, an increase of 1.9 trillion from the current year target of 29.7 trillion shillings, according to URA. As at 31st March 2024, they had collected 19.9 trillion shillings. Some members of parliament wanted to know the assumption of this increase in revenue collection. The target for 23-24 was 29.672. That's an increment of 15%. Now, when you apply the same increment of 15%, the target correction should be 34.12 trillion, not 31.54, which is being indicated. I'm wondering what is new and what is really magical that you are going to do to raise the expectation of this country that you are going to raise additional 1.9 trillion. I think that would put us at rest. New growth, let's say from 29.6 to now 31.5, representing revenue growth of about 6.4 percent, vis-a-vis the growth in the tax um, the taxpayers register. Minister Msasizi told committee members that the higher performance in revenue is usually experienced in the last quarter of the financial year because there is more compliance. What URA has assured us, we have an assurance that by June 30th, we shall be able to meet our target of 29 trillion. We presented in Parliament the tax measures together with the administrative efficiency which we are seeking. Both of them, we expect to, them to generate 1.9 trillion. John Musinguzi explains the measures to be taken in achieving the target of 31.5 trillion revenue collection next financial year. Enforcement of some of the technologies. Some of these technologies, we've been rolling them out for the last three years, like IFRIS. But of late, we are reaching out to other wholesalers like the people in Chikubo. So when you hear some noise today uh, about, you know, uh, some taxpayers threatening to demonstrate over IFRIS, this is a good technology. You are a staff live because of greener pastures. Some who have stayed for a long time are pushed out because of enhanced terms and others like 80 so far failed to meet the integrity standards, hence chest.
I'm Nafka Farida and Gloria Guitabinji in Kampala. Now in a bid to enhance access to services, the Uganda Registration Service Bureau has launched an online business registration system. The permanent secretary of the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Amina Zawede, commended URSB for the milestone achieved as well as emphasized the public to embrace such technological advancements. Previously, registering a business with URSB required cumbersome paperwork and prolonged waiting periods for certificates. However, with the launch of the online business registration system, the registration process is streamlined and automated significantly, reducing time and effort. And yeah. The Permanent Secretary Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Amina Zawede, highlighted the collaboration between the Ministry and URSB in implementing the online registration system and its benefits. We, are, we have had already discussions of improving this system further. You know, we said we can't work in isolation. There are 25 MDAs that are already cross-checking information with this system. But there are also other systems that need to be automated. For example, when you're registering a business, you have to have a postal address. And that postal address resides with post office, for example. So we want to create ease of doing business, like the board chair said. Despite the benefits of digitalization, concerns about potential job losses due to automation persist. Before, when people were doing a registration of their businesses, they would come in and maybe you have a copy typist entering data and all this, but today, people are doing it themselves using either a phone or a computer or a laptop. So we don't need a copy typist in a room somewhere to be feed, you know, entering this data. Masika Newisho, the Registrar General of URSB, revealed that the agency aims to register over 873,543 unregistered businesses by the end of the fiscal year 2026-2027. The core functions are to register all those over 30 registers that we have. We also maintain the registers and we collect non-tax revenue as we register as well. And uh, we have registered uh, a lot of progress in terms of business registration. There's an increase in company registrations by over 35%. There's an increase of marriage registrations by over 40%. There's an increase of utility model registrations. These are like um, simple innovations that solve community problems. The increase is even by 100%. This shift to online registration has minimized corruption risks and increased fairness in application process. One step, two step, three, up to like how many steps, seven steps, but now there are very few steps that uh, you go through to register your business. So it has addressed the cost of doing business, the cost of registration, the time it takes to register and uh, the, the inconveniences that come with registration. This launched online registration service that was rolled a year back has since collected 90 billion Ugandan shillings for government. Justin Nakami, UBC News. The former chief of defense forces, General Wilson Mbadi, has assumed office as the state minister for trade, industry and cooperatives, succeeding Harriet Ntabazi. Now, during the handover ceremony held at Farmer's House in Kampala, Mbadi wasted no time in outlining his vision and mission to transform Uganda's trade industry into a powerhouse of economic growth, targeting youth employment and quality enhancement throughout the trade value chain. General Mbadi's ambitious plans include tackling youth unemployment head-on by creating vibrant trade opportunities and dissuading them from engaging in activities detrimental to society such as strikes and vandalism. I understand the strategic importance of this ministry for the security of this country because that's where I have been. Uh, and... Uh, so from that strategic point of view, uh, when I come to this ministry, it's because I know 
it plays a big, big role in the stability, peace and security of this country. If you have money flowing into citizens' pockets through a good trade arrangements that allows proper or the improved the most domestic trade and then not only quantitative but quality products for export who will be out there to be convinced to go on the streets to go and demonstrate everybody's busy everybody's busy I am looking after my cows and they say, let's go and demonstrate. Who is going to look after my cow? Yes. <laughs> he comes with his eyes set on revitalizing government's quest to attain a $500 billion GDP target by 2030. For us, we can only um, add on so that um, we, we go to the, what the president has been saying. He wants $500 a 500 billion US dollars GDP mm. Is that what is? in the next, next 10 years. years. Yes. So incrementally we must work towards that. And so the question has been what policies, what legislation, what strategy, what plans, what linkage measures with the other MDAs are in place. We may think uh, go to some of the answers and so those as we I settle those are some of the things I will be looking at. I heard somebody said quality control. Is it your way? So quality control and NBS we are watching you. Outgoing state minister for trade Harriet and Tabazi says she leaves the ministry having steered a campaign that saw the country's trade volumes increase. Uh, recently we took to Nigeria, we took to Mumbai, we are still opening other markets. And I was uh, in lead of that. And I want to pray that you just speak from where I have stopped. While welcoming him to his new appointment, the Trade Ministry expressed readiness to work with Mbadi in fostering the Trade Ministry's vision and working tirelessly to propel the nation's trade sector forward. But see, I want that to thank the President of having appointed you and brought you here. And I also want to thank the Almighty God who guides him to have done this sort of thing. As much as you have also made your speech, I was so impressed that it was timely that you come here. We also gladly welcome the new minister, and we believe that he will be the driver, the ministry to, to drive the, the ministry to greater heights, and pass and pick the baton from where Honorable Harriet Ntabazi has left off. Crispus, Ainitwe, Joel Vubia, UBC News. To ensure proactive measures in public acceptance of vaccination exercises for specific diseases, it is essential to educate the public before implementing such initiatives. While there may, be, there may not be a direct law enforcing health measures, it remains the government's responsibility to prioritize the health of its citizens. Recently, the Minister of Health announced the mass vaccination campaign against yellow fever for individuals aged 1 to 60 years across the five regions. The vaccination campaign, which commenced on April 2, 2024, targets regions including Kampala, Ankole, Moroto, Soroti and Masaka. The voluntary mass vaccination, including in schools, aims to curb the spread of yellow fever and its potential health impacts. However, questions raise regarding the legal basis for enforcing such vaccination campaigns by the Minister of Health. General government has a duty to ensure that uh, to do anything for the good order and well-being of its citizens. 
and uh, among those obligations is the, to ensure that they receive those uh, receive health care which includes vaccinations uh, because the law says the immunization act says that the ministry the minister can come up with a statutory instrument gazetting a particular disease for massive vaccination in fact it's mandatory and it makes it criminal for any parent who refuses to immunize a child who is within that child uh, uh, that, that, that range of one year to six, six years well as the yellow fever vaccination is voluntarily and requires parental consent for school children some individuals remain hesitant citing concerns over potential side effects of the vaccines you're not supposed to administer medication or any form of medication by force save for particular exceptions so ordinarily you're not supposed to administer a vaccine by force or without the consent of the power of the person so it's even if the parents are not aware that they should give consent it should be the duty of the vaccinators because for them they are health professionals to advise them that you are, we're supposed to require your consent before you're vaccinated in the event of adverse reactions to administered vaccines who bears the accountability not because of the vaccine itself but maybe the vaccine was administered in a wrong manner or in a wrong dosage that one you can hold the government or, uh, and its agent, the, the, the particular person, responsible. But if the wrong thing is as a result of something that was within the vaccine, that reacted maybe on particular individuals, then that one you can't blame the government because the government is administering. These drugs are approved by even World Health Organization, which is a UN body, uh, as fit for that purpose. So if it's something that goes wrong, uh, maybe you could sue the company uh, the, which manufactured the virus. Given public apprehension about the vaccines used, there is a call for enhanced public education regarding the vaccines utilized in the campaign. However, not everyone shares this perspective. I don't think there is need uh, because ordinarily, just like all other drugs, when people go for painkillers, uh, when people go for pressure or high blood pressure drugs or diabetes drugs, they don't ordinarily are not given the ingredients of each and every drug. For some of these diseases which have been there for a long time, uh, polio, uh, uh, yellow fever, their vaccines have been tested over and over again. So the, on, the, the, the debate on the type shouldn't arise because by the time World Health Organization flags off a drug, it has gone through some bit of rigorous research. Loaja Jamusi contains that public sensitization should precede any vaccination exercise. There are people who have biases against vaccines or against drugs generally. It's been a, a, a campaign of a few days, at least in the mainstream media, and we've not seen them enough showing reasons why this campaign and why at this time. That's why that sometimes when people come up with all sorts of bias against them, they even if it, they easily, they're, they're easily believed because of those boxes that they've not done enough to explain why are you doing this and why at this time. The yellow fever vaccination campaign started on 2nd April 2024 and is scheduled to conclude on 8th April 2024. Deborah Nama Rebecca, UBC News. The Buganda Premier, Charles Peter Maiga, has pledged to support the move by the State Minister in charge of Youth and Children Affairs, Balam Barugahara, who has offered himself as a mediator for the release of political prisoners. Maiga, who has received a section of a Patriotic League of Uganda members at Bulange Mengo, notes that if it needs him engaging new leadership, he will do so for the good of the country. Ministers Dr. Balam Barugahara and Godfrey Kavianga and the Departmental League of Uganda Umbrella have paid a courtesy call to the Uganda Kingdom. At Bulange Mingo, the ministers, together with their supporters, have been received by the Uganda Premier, Charles Peter Maiga. General Mohon, extend my congratulations to him for being named CEF. You see, when you go to St. Mary's College, Isumi, <laughs> when you go to St. Mary's College, Isumi, good things follow you. So, uh, he came to Isumi many years after I left, but we are both smartists. So, tell him that I say, as his elder brother, he must fill the office like a smartist. <laughs> The visit is part of the ongoing public response towards the Kabaka's marathon scheduled for this Sunday.
we thank you, OHT One New, for the open door policy. You, you welcome everybody, irrespective of their political affiliation, religious affiliation, tribe, or any other category of people. Please maintain that open door. With the team purchasing kits worth 20 million shillings, the Uganda Kingdom Premier has appreciated this gesture. And you know, the Kabaka is the champion of the fight against HIV AIDS, picked by UNAIDS, and we want to banish AIDS out of Uganda by 23rd. The Uganda Premier, however, has added his voice to that of the Junior Minister for Youth and Children Affairs, Dr. Balamba Rugahara, to facilitate the safe release of alleged political prisoners. I appreciate Honorable Balam Barugahara for saying he's going to engage the president and any UP supporters who are in jail are released. Please engage with the leadership of NUP and go to the president and these people get released. They were, they were arrested three years ago. We are into another election cycle. We need to unwind as Ugandans. And I think the gesture of releasing them we reconcile the country to a very large extent. And um, in your efforts to have them released, I'm your supporter. I'm your supporter. <clears throat> if you want to talk to the NUP leaders, I'll talk to them so that you work together. And everybody is out of jail. Maiga is also re-echoing the need for a united Uganda. So let us all struggle for the unity of Ugandans. We have very slight differences, really. The two ministers were accompanied by PLA Central Committee members, that is Michael Mawanda, Michael Nwagira alias Toyota, Daudi Kabanda, Cedric Babundirima, among others. Today as PLU, we have paid the courtesy visit to the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Buganda to hand in our contribution as PLU towards the Kawaka's call of keeping Ugandan's heresy. He has called various Ugandans to be heresy. Robert Nyango, UBC News. The Fisheries Protection Unit of the UPDF has destroyed 15 billion worth of illegal fishing nets confiscated from the fishing community of Katosi landing site in Mukono. The destruction exercise of this illegal fishing gear was superintended by Major Frank Kandiho the head of operations in the Fisheries Protection Unit. The operation against illegal fishing has seen over 15 billion worth of illegal fishing gear, including nets, monofilaments, and beach sandal nets destroyed. We have been doing operations very well, and we have been coordinating, and we have been coordinating, we have been destroying like a small boats on the landing side, then uh, net, which today we have burned. This one we have there, Kokota, that was gas, gas, gas chain net, then monofilament, then other size net, uh, other size hook, then a metallic basket, a plastic basket. The general total we estimate. That one will come 15 billion three hundred and seventy nine million and three hundred twenty seven thousand Uganda cities. With the increasing camouflage of fishermen to participate in illegal activities, the unit is adapting to modern preventative methods like creation of spy teams and dialogue through landing site leadership. That we are using force. But you are there, you are the one to support. You are everybody here intelligent. You are the one to give us information. If you did not give us, we are here. But we are using our brain with other people who support us. That's why Punge stayed, but we are still fighting with them. If you agree, we can stop that. But if you did not agree, we, we continue with using the force. If you will call upon the fishermen, the fishing community, to work hand in hand and fight the vice, this vice of illegal fishing, and the fishermen should leave 
should stop using bad fishing gears like these monitorments we have seen, we have burnt today, and the cocotas. The fishing community is challenged by the high cost of acceptable fishing gear, hence calling for government subsidization. With the decrease in the number of tilapia and mokene in the lake, the Fisheries Protection Unit has intensified its operation under Lieutenant Colonel Masi Yukahire to combat all forms of illegal fishing making strides in the past months. Komagum Rogers for UBC. With the backing of the Initiative for Social and Economic Rights, Bumeru Sea Village has lodged a complaint before the Equal Opportunities Commission. They assert that the prolonged denial of access to clean water in their community violates their fundamental rights to clean and safe water, health and life as guaranteed under the Constitution. For over a decade, the residents of Bumeru have been deprived of basic access to clean water, resorting to drawing water from Lake Victoria, exposing them to risks from crocodile-infested waters. The Vice Chairperson of Equal Opportunities Commission, Joe Kwokso Jok, has played to explore remedies in collaboration with the respective ministry after conducting on site investigations. At some point, carry out investigations. So, these allegations in the petition definitely we do not immediately take this for gospel truth. We have to investigate this, investig uh, uh, these allegations, we have to go to the ground. We have to consult with the various relevant ministries and other institutions to establish the truth about these allegations. Mm -hmm. And then we will then consider the remedies you have prayed for here uh, and see how best we can uh, address Know, the social issues raised. Atori Elizabeth, the legal officer of ISER, highlights the challenges faced by residents due to the proximity of water points to reserves, exposing them to dangers such as crocodiles, resulting into deaths, poor water quality, and other hazards. She recounts the unfortunate incident of Manji Salimat, a 40 year old resident who suffered a miscarriage while fetching water from the lake. Uh, of course, that brings challenges in regard to the quality of water that they are able to access. And the residents have reported uh, serious health risks, including having gotten bilhazia and typhoid. There are also further challenges, Your Honor, around the access points that they are able to um, get that water. Musinano Bidari, the chairperson of LC1 Bumeru Sea Village, underscores the waterborne diseases plaguing residents and the financial burden of treating them. He shares a tragic story of Majidu Mabuno, a 39 year old who lost his 15 year old daughter to a crocodile attack while fetching water. That's why I've just come this week. They will be so, so glad when they are already helped. Well, UBC News tonight takes a very short break, but we'll return after these messages. Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo. The general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. 
Just take a polite loan of 200k to stock my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tinge. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the chief administrative officers, city mayors, resident city commissioners, city clerks, city and division councillors, wards and LC chairpersons, as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the national population and housing census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1 how many we are 2 where we are 3 how we are living 4 what we own and 5 where we access services from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua Fort Porto Gulu Hoima Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755 342 128 or 0773 342 128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSO's office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. Welcome back from that break. In more news this evening, stakeholders have begun initiating different strategies to avert the poor performance of pupils in Oyam district. Benson Ongom, the district inspector of school, says the district has continuously performed poorly but notes a number of strategies laid to address the poor performance in the district. Our reporter Eddie Olwa reports. Had... Uh Three first grade. Oyam is one of the districts where pupils have been performing poorly. It has been attributed to a number of factors, including absenteeism, inadequate infrastructure, unmotivated teachers, and lack of parental involvement. The mother ran away and the father has also left, so the child will definitely get you because has not been in school. Aloni Primary School, one of the schools in the district, has never produced any candidate in first grade in the last eight years. We visited P2 class to witness if learning is taking place and this is what we found out. A single teacher found handling all subjects in a classroom of 194 pupils. Teaching all the subjects, managing from morning up to the time these children are supposed to go home. Their books are supposed to be marked. They, are, they need to be assessed on a daily basis and those who are seated behind definitely if there is any who really did not follow what the teacher was saying definitely for the whole of today this that child did not learn whereas there is over enrollment in aloni at lela Olok, the school has been abandoned by the parents in 2022 the best ple candidate got 32 and the rest were in division u dropping the entire enrollment of the school to 279. this year there is a slight improvement and I hope they will now start bringing certain things that are important for the learning of the children. 
I do support that which would continue so that we develop the school. The district inspector of schools, Benson Ongoma, says a number of strategies have been laid down to improve performance. Using also different strategies and among them is one which Fitch has helped us now to come up with selecting some seven schools to go for exposure visit. We need to compare notes. Last week, with the support from Fitch, a local NGO, the district transported the leadership of seven schools for a learning visit to Abalokwere Primary School in Apache District. <laughs> Despite being located over 40 kilometers in the village, the school is the best performing in Apache district. Ways of conserving forests. The school has instituted a number of policies to ensure standards. For effective teaching, teachers must live with all their spouses in the school to limit temptations on young girls and their children must all study in the same school. That one, automatically you must handle you, that, that class of yours very well because your child is there. So group work is given on daily basis and they are all survived. The children are very active, especially when we saw the children doing the group work and the school administrators, they all have the school at heart. We have learned a lot. We want to ensure that every child is learning and every child is learning at the right level. Every child is able to access quality education. The performance of last year was not all that very bad, but when we compare to this very school where we are, I see that they are quite far much ahead of us, but there is something learned. According to the it average score, Oyam was ranked number 143 in the 2022 PLE results compared to 150 the previous year. The education department played to convene a meeting with the stakeholders in the district to lay strategies to implement the lessons learned to improve performance. Edi Uloa, UBC News. Over 4,000 health workers have turned up for an aptitude test organized by the Health Service Commission as part of the implementation of the e-recruitment system. We have more details. The Department of Recruitment and Selection System was set up at the Commission to design appropriate selection systems and methods of the health service. Over 4,000 health workers have turned up for the aptitude test set by the Health Service Commission, where only 118 will be selected to serve in government facilities. The, the staffing levels of institutions now is low because of the new structures. So you need to recruit well over, shall I say, 5,000 health workers to be able to meet the demand. Mm. Then if you look at the local governments, the demand is even bigger. The population has increased. The mm. population has increased. So the gaps are quite many. The Chairperson Health Service Commission, Pius Okong, says the commission has been operating a manual recruitment system, but developments in ICT have necessitated the reforms. In the new structures, you'll find that there are specialists, even the general hospitals, which is the current district hospital, Iganga, Nakaseke, Kambuga, Bugiri. In the new structures, you'll have specialists there. You'll have even degree nurses in the general hospitals so that you're able to provide us special services even the general hospital at district level. The e-recruitment system is currently being used for creating and maintaining job profiles, running job adverts, receiving applications online, among others. Pius Okong clarified the misconceptions surrounding the purported ban on recruitment. These hospitals were given money in July, but they were told not to start the recruitment. Recruitment continues for positions to replace staff that have retired, passed away, or left for other opportunities with over 200 appointments made. Sudat so Kaye, UBC News. President Museveni has appointed Honorable Nirabashitsi Sara Mateke as the State Minister of State for Defense and Veteran Affairs. Honorable Mateke expressed her gratitude to the President for this appointment and pledged to work diligently in her new role. 
Hospitals have gathered at Mayor's Gardens in Kisoro District to celebrate Honorable Sarah Mateke's recent appointment as the State Minister for Defense and Veteran Affairs. Residents of Kisoro District warmly welcome their woman member of parliament, Honorable Sarah Mateke, following her appointment by President Museve. Speaking at the function, Honorable Sarah Mateke expressed her gratitude to God and President Museve for entrusting her with this position. This time, from the reshuffle, I was taken to defense and I want to thank him. And I believe that uh, in, in the Ministry of Defense, I'm going there uh, to give the little knowledge I have. Mateke believes that her new role will enable her to contribute significantly to the development of Kisoro District and the nation of Uganda as a whole. We shall be coming in as policy makers so that we also give in our input where we can uh, for the sake of uh, our country and of course uh, securing the security that uh, NRM has put in place for all these years. She urged Ugandans to continue supporting the government, emphasizing the progress made in various sectors such as education, health, water, agriculture and electricity. We have also done a lot in health. We have been uh, giving delivery beds, uh, oxygen cylinders, and of course that is on my side as, as Sarah. But as government, we have done a lot of education, we have seed schools which have been put in place, uh, we have the seed schools, of course our teachers are being paid, another thing that I can talk about in education. Kisoro District Chairperson Abe Bizimana and Richard Indiana also extended their appreciation to President Museve and Honor Osara Mateke for their efforts in normal development. <laughs> Kisoro resident district commissioner Badu Sebiara pledged to collaborate closely with Honorable Sarah Mateke to improve government programs in the district. That we are going to work with the Honorable Minister to ensure that the Fumbira has the docket which normally votes 100 percent for NRM is not the, the figure does not go down. We have seen some challenges here and there regarding the infrastructure. We pledge to our people that, uh, yes, the tourism road, which is a big complaint here, will be handled. A resident of Kisoro district, Tule Jenda Asingario, urged the Honorable Salma Mateke to prioritize strengthening security in the district, particularly due to its proximity to the border with Congo. Because Kisoro, we border two countries. We border the DRC Congo and Rwanda, so we need to make sure, she needs to make sure that we have good security in Kisoro and also develop our Kisoro. Police Welfare Department have highlighted the need to train police officers on the importance of cooperatives as most of them are stuck in poverty due to low income. The Police Commissioner of Police Welfare Department, Al Haji Chirunji Sulaiman, made the remarks at the residence of the Ugandan Ambassador to Sudan, Dr. Rashid Yahaya Semuddu in Bwerunga. He urged police officers to join this association to help them develop and get funds given to the needy. You, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever your deployment, please come vibrantly and we work together in this Muslim fraternity. Because Ambassador has intimated to me very many things that can be done by us with him. Ambassador Russia. Ebisiyo MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited, Erunga Miswa Bank and Kuruya Uganda.
Nyati Motion Pictures brings you Tuko Pamoja Toro segment. Follow the romantic tale of an adventurous prince, Kaboyo Kasusun Kwanzi, who fell in love with a beautiful county. Toro Kingdom was carved out of Bunyoro Kitara. In 1830, King Nyamutukura. Akasindika omutabani we. Kaboyo Yehile Toro, kama wafungere kumutuwe kerebu kodo. I'm forming my own kingdom. Nyoro na Toro, basically, muntu omu. Tuko Pamoja? Premiering on Saturday, 6 April 2024 at Ndere Center Ntinda from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. To get a ticket, call 0778-787-660. And now into the world of business, the China National Offshore Oil Corporation has reassured on the government's commitment of producing the first fine oil by 2025. While providing the update on the progress of oil production in Kingfisher, the company confirmed that six out of 31 wells have been drilled. in Uganda has inspected the ongoing Sinok oil production in Kingfisher oil field, Chikube. The Kingfisher oil field is projected to contribute 40,000 barrels of crude oil, which is 30% of the anticipated Uganda's oil production. Investment eventually is going to be almost a third of the economy of, of Uganda, contributing about 30% uh, to the gross domestic product. Uh, Sinok Uganda reiterated their commitment on creating more jobs for Ugandans. Our Canadian con contractors already employ more than 3,500 local workers. As the construction continues, it is estimated that approximately 170,000 new jobs will be in Uganda. With efforts towards the local content adherence, Sinok is working closely with partners to protect the environment and other related corporate social responsibilities. Sinok has been actively fulfilling its cooperative, uh, corporate social res responsibility while promoting the construction of projects. It has continuously increased its investment and support for local education, medical care, employment, and environmental protection, and helped local economic and social development. As part of community engagement program, Sinok co-hosted 17 regional schools around Kingfisher Oil Field, where 30 students competed in a drawing competition. Your creativity and innovation are the keys to unlock not just the prizes, but the opportunity for a better future. Sincerely hope through this event, you can enhance understanding of China and the Chinese enterprises and become envoys of China-Uganda friendship in the near future. This initiative targets to promote talented students to further their opportunities. The awarding function was marked under the theme, The Beauties of King Fisher in Your Eyes. And the uh, has come this far. So. Lydia Chomkama and Juma Samba, UBC News. That wraps it up here in UBC News tonight. Thank you so much for your company. Now on behalf of the amazing team working tirelessly behind the scenes, we wish you a good night. We'll leave you with tomorrow's weather forecast with Nantesa Juliet. Good night. My name is Juliet Nantesa with the latest weather forecast from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. We are still in the rain season and when we take a look at the satellite imagery today, it shows that the rain bearing clouds are over us and scattered, concentrating more in the eastern part of our country. And we advise people living near hilly areas to vacate for a while because we expect these rains to become more intense, which may lead to landslides. 
In the morning central, we expect to wake up with thunder showers, that is for Kampala and Masaka. Elsewhere, we expect scattered showers. Eastern, we expect scattered showers in most areas. The western stretch, we expect to wake up with showers, that is for Kasese and Mbara. Kabale and Masindi, we expect to wake up with sunny intervals. The north, we expect to wake up with scattered showers in most areas. Later on in the afternoon, temperatures expected to rise to 28 in most areas for central with scattered showers for Mubende and Nakasongola. Eastern, we expect a maximum of 28 for Ginger and Toro. Elsewhere, we expect a maximum of 29 with thunder showers. Western, we expect a maximum of 29 in Kasese, Masindi 27, Kabale a maximum of 24 with thunder showers in most areas. In the north, we expect a maximum of 29 in most areas with thunder showers. For the international forecast, Dubai, we expect sunny intervals at a maximum of 32. Nairobi, we expect a maximum of 25 with thunder showers. Cairo, we expect a maximum of 33 with sunny conditions. And London, we expect a maximum of 17 with cloudy conditions. That's all we had for you from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Stay tuned and stay blessed. UBC, inspiring Uganda. Banyeta Kumhanji Donata, the chairperson of our group, I am the chairperson of this group that got money. The group is called Kalsandala HIV Stroke AIDS Craft Women Group. UWEP gave us money in 2017 and they gave us 3.3 million Ugandan shillings. We used it in one year and got 23 million out of it. We do baskets and kitchen gardens and we also have a saving group. We thank you Web because this money helped us as women. Women can now educate their children and build houses because many of them are single mothers. We work without jealousy because we want to leave a legacy that even those who will be around tomorrow will appreciate. One on one with Michael Jordan Lukumwa. A weekly face to face conversation focusing on accountability, inspiration, information, and sensitization of the public. From the various sources, such as inspirational profiles. Having a disability is not inability. Professional guidance. There is no special antiretroviral uh, therapy that, that is given specifically for, for discordant what? Uh, couples. And of course, politics. Don't you see anywhere that you would give a credit in the fight against COVID? My role as the owner of the country is not to, you know, be preoccupied by giving credit to my server. We have said that if we are to talk to uh, Genome 70, there must be certain conditions in place. Is it true that you paid 5 million shillings to MPs that voted for Anita Mong and Tayebo? That is laughable. Why would we pay when we have nominated them as SEC? The Tavari Party has been represented in Uganda's parliament for 10 years. We only by one MP, you yourself. And my daughter, Susan. <laughs> Every Friday 9 p.m. It's one on one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa on UBC TV, inspiring Uganda.
Bori mnyanya Uganda na itinga makuru marunge. UBC West ina makuru marunge kandi agari kwesigwa. Rero za program za yuzi omuri nyachitara hamwe nurufumbira. UBC West ina teknolojia e yomurende eri kujivasa kuhika omuvichwe kaviona omuihanga nangu na hiriye hang. Tu kuatere aha frequencies ez. Chisoro chenda na mshanzu katunyu ze mshanzu fama. Kamari chenda nisha tu katunyu ze mshanzu fama. Hoima chenda na muenda katunyu ze mwe fama. Kampala igane itano katunyu ze mshanzu fama. Mbarara chenda na mshanzu katunyu ze ina fama. Futpoto chenda na mnana katunyu ze mnana fama. Masindi igane itano fama. Kurichiriza UBC West Ohujiri mbaganiza UBC West Mpika Huna 107.3 Kampala 96.9 Mbale 95.7 Jinja 98.6 Soroti You are all covered UBC Mdewo UBC is the national public broadcaster. We educate, inform, entertain, and inspire our audiences. You can watch us on free to air channel 001, DSTV channel 282. Go TV channel 371, Star Times channel 201, Zuku TV channel 20, and Azam TV channel 350. Even when your subscription expires, you can still watch UBC for free on your pay TV platforms. I'm Kaylee with the very special weather report. From up there to down here, everything is crazy. If we don't listen to scientists, Things are going to be even crazier when I grow up. Let's look at the forecast for 2050. Heat waves will affect 94% of children, making playing outside a thing of the past. Extreme droughts will wipe out wheat crops, killing the one food my brother eats, bread. And disasters will cost taxpayers almost $6 trillion. My parents hate taxes. Of course, all of this is caused by a blanket of heat-trapping pollution in the atmosphere that we could just, like... Not put up there? But don't worry, there's still a chance of clear skies. Right now, clean energy systems are moving in from the east to the west, creating tons of coal jobs. And solar prices have dropped lower than oil and gas. Going to the satellite, it looks like a high-pressure system of grown-ups could still move in and protect